Hey, I'm Jamie. And I'm Jay. And today we're going to take a plastic cauldron from the Halloween store, dress it up with some paint and special effects, and see if we can turn it into a way more awesome prop. The witch's cauldron is kind of like a classic Halloween decoration. You see it a lot in the Halloween stores and a lot of people do props like this. We wanted to give it a try because we've never done this one. This project has a ton of parts. We're going to paint the cauldron, we're going to build the teepee, we're going to hang the cauldron from the teepee, we're going to build the fire, and then we're going to do some light and smoke effects to the fire and the cauldron and the teepee. <laughs> so there's a ton of things. If you're following along, don't feel like you have to do all of the parts and any one or two or several will still make a really awesome prop. None of these steps are hard at all. They're all super easy, but there are a lot of them. So let's get started. So the Witch's Cauldron prop that we're using is a super common thing that you can get at basically any Halloween store. Luckily though, it has a kind of a cool sculpt. It's got handles on the side and it's got some cool details. The first step we did in painting it was to give it a base coat with a black hammered spray paint. When we painted it with the spray paint, it didn't look any different at all and it kind of seemed like a waste of time, but when we got to the detailed paint, because we had that layer of primer on there, it helps them stick and it made it work really well. You're better off just doing like a flat black cheap spray paint coat rather than, you know, the fancy hammered stuff since it didn't really It didn't work. help at all. <laughs> so to make it look like it had bubbled over and leaked over the edges, we took some oatmeal and some Mod Podge, which is like a craft glue, mixed them together and dabbed them on. It didn't work right away. This is one of those things we found on the internet that was like, oh, it's so easy, just put oatmeal in the thing. And basically it like wouldn't stick at all and it was falling all over the place. You needed to get the ratio right. There needed to be enough glue, less oatmeal. So we, we eventually got it to stick. We used kind of a drip pattern, so it was in like V's, which worked out better than kind of just sporadic oatmeal everywhere. Sporadic oatmeal. So once all the oatmeal was on there, we had to let the Mod Podge dry, which takes two-ish hours or so. Yeah. And then we put one more layer of just Mod Podge over everything just to secure it, make sure it wasn't gonna fall off. And we didn't want like squirrels smelling it and it getting all moldy in the rain. And Are squirrels gonna eat our witch's cauldron? I hope squirrels don't eat our witch's cauldron. I did not consider that. It's covered in delicious oatmeal. So once everything was dry, the next step was painting it. The effect we were going for here was a rusty look. The way you paint rust is you alternate big splotchy areas of brown and black. You use just one brush, two different paints on the thing, and you use like a light tapping motion, twisting your brush as you go, and eventually it starts to look like rust. And then you take your orange, or in our case copper, and you do da little dabs of highlights all around, and that makes extra rustiness. If you're worried about not being able to like paint perfect rust, don't be worried about it. Don't be afraid of paint. You can always paint over it. That's the great thing about paint. You just, if you don't like it, you just do it again. The final step in the painting was to take all of those little chunks of oatmeal and kind of paint them green and just get some really interesting details on there. This is supposed to represent like a witch's brew that's filled with brains and... Frogs. Frogs, yeah, that's where the green comes from. <laughs> I'd say all in, we probably spent about two hours painting this thing and we were pretty happy with how it looked in the end. We're gonna make the teepee for the cult, the, it's not a teepee. We have no idea what the thing, the triangle teepee looking thing that you use to hold the cauldron is called. Anyway, we've made it out of bamboo, which is nice because it's light and it's super strong. To do that, you take two sticks and put them parallel to each other and take your third stick, put it between the two sticks and that's perpendicular to the other two sticks. Then you tie a knot around that one stick and then you wrap it around a few times and then you tie it off and you prop it up. So once everything's tied up, you basically just kind of rise it up and then pull the legs apart and it holds at the top. And once it was up, we wrapped some more twine kind of around the top just to give it a little more cooler look. We also took some paint and just kind of randomly like spread some paint around. The bamboo is a great choice because it's very strong, but it was very like clean looking. So we wanted to give it a little character. To hang the cauldron, we're using this chain we got at the hardware store. I think it's usually used for like hanging lamps and stuff. The only problem we had with the chain is that it looked too brand new. So we just hit it with a little bit of that spray paint that we used before, and it just gave it like a kind of a little older look. Once the chain was painted, we cut it into three sections. They were about three feet long each. Then we drilled some holes in the sides of the cauldron and opened up the chain and attached them and then attached them all at the top. 
We actually drilled those holes before we painted it, which you probably noticed, but uh, just, uh, you know, roll with it. Since we're not gonna be putting a whole lot of weight in the cauldron, we weren't worried about re reinforcing where the chain is attached to it. Yeah, these techniques are specifically aimed at, you know, not having this thing be very heavy, and that's why this works. If you are gonna put something super heavy in the cauldron, you're probably gonna wanna do a, a different technique to attach the chain. The cauldron's gonna be hanging, so we thought it would be cool for underneath it for there to be like a fire or like some hot coals that were heating up whatever's brewing inside. We experimented with a whole bunch of techniques to make fire, but what we ended up with was the tried and true technique of using expanding spray foam and some orange string lights. The spray foam is a really great way to create like a pile of coals kind of around the ground. And then the lights were actually embedded inside the spray foam and it doesn't harm them, they still work really well. And as long as you don't pile it up too high, you can see the lights really brightly through the foam. It took a few hours for the spray foam to set and then it was ready for paint. The first thing we did was a wash. We were hoping that the wash would give it a nice gray look and then also fill in the cracks. And it worked in filling in all the cracks, but it didn't stick at all to the foam, so there was, there was no grayness there. <laughs> you could totally skip that step. It was worthless. It didn't help at all. The effect we're going for is a pile of burning embers. So to do that, we're going to use some red and black and gray spray paint. Now, during the night time when it's all lit up, it doesn't really matter what the paint looks like, but during the day it kind of matters. You still want it to look like it's a pile of ashes. We weren't too worried about this. We just sort of randomly put paint on until we thought it looked good. You just don't want to put too much paint on because if you do too heavy of a coat, it may block some of the light shining through. We wanted the cauldron to have like a bubbling kind of witch's brew thing going on where there's like something brewing in there and it's kind of spilling out over the sides. So we needed some fog inside. So to make the fog, we're gonna use these super cool little technology things that make fog. <laughs> It's an ultrasonic fogger, and the way it works is by it vibrates with an ultrasonic frequency, breaking up the water into millions of little droplets, and then it sprays those droplets into the air as a thick fog. It's actually really, really cool. And what's nice about these is you can plug them in, and they use very little power, and they just run forever and just keep making fog. Since the cauldron's gonna be hanging, we don't want it to weigh a million pounds, so we can't fill the whole thing with water. Luckily, these little guys only need about a couple inches of water. So what we're gonna do is build a platform, put that inside the cauldron, and then put a bowl on the top that this little guy can sit in. We're trying to keep the weight of the cauldron as low as possible since it's gonna be hanging. So to build our little platform, we used a piece of foam for the tabletop. Now, you don't have to use foam. You could use plywood and work just as well and probably be cheaper, but we didn't have plywood and we had foam, so foam it was. We cut out a circle because it's circular. And we also, for the legs of the table, used some poplar dowels, which happen to be cutoffs from our Pickler Triangle project. To attach the legs to the tabletop, we tried to drill some holes for the dowels in the foam. That was kind of a disaster. It really didn't work that well at all. So basically, we sort of stuck them in place, made sure they were level, and then used some hot glue to attach them. Everything worked really well, and the table fit in there perfectly. We got really lucky and just happened to have this round dish thing that almost fit perfectly inside the cauldron. So we duct taped the two handle holds to make it more solid, and then we put a couple layers of trash bags inside to help it hold water. Then we used duct tape around the edges to secure the trash bags in place. We basically created a miniature swimming pool. When we put the table in and then put the little dish on top of it, it fit really well, but there was a slight gap around the outside, and the fog from the water was kind of going into the gap and kind of messing it up a little. So what we decided to do was take some black duct tape and just ride it around the rim and it kind of guides the fog up out and over the edges. To hang the cauldron, we basically just took that chain from before, we attached it to the rim, and then we hooked it onto the twine at the top of our TP thing. For the finishing touch, we took an outdoor light, attached it to the top of our teepee pyramid thing, and pointed it down at the fog to give the fog a really cool, eerie glow. This build was super fun. There was a lot of individual components, and each one had it, its own challenges and kind of things we had to figure out, which is the best part of making stuff, but we're super happy with how it came out. Yeah, in the end, it was totally worth it.
Remember that if you like the video, you can support us by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel, and sharing it with all your friends. We wanted to... <laughs> so if it ever... If they're... <laughs> Spray paint helps have a good game. <laughs> the color is going to be... The color... <laughs>